you were here, you heard me utter the words, next Sunday will be the shortest sermon I will give. And that's why this is a large congregation this morning. Yes. <laughs> I want to share with you the Athanasian Creed. Now, as you see up here, it says it is written in response to the Arian controversy. And I'm sure you studied that in school. No? Arius, an early Christian in the 300s, was of that camp that thought that Jesus was not, in fact, divine. There are still Christians today who call themselves Christian who do not believe that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God. So, at the Council of Nicaea in 354, Constantine the Emperor got all the bishops together and said, you're not leaving this room until you come out with what Christians believe. They came up with creed. Well, that didn't solve all the issues of the church. So the Athanasian Creed was written. We don't know exactly who wrote it. It's attributed to Athanasius, the Bishop of Alexandria. But I want you to read this. I want you to put everything out of your hands, put it down, you can read it later. Into your thoughts, into your minds. You know. Yes, there's a lot. So I can't no. <laughs> Glenda's the only exception. So I'm going to read a section at a time. There's going to be no commentary. So I want you to, I'm going to pause, allow it to sink in, and then I'll continue. This is, and you'll see why this is not a widely used creed even today. Whoever will be saved. Before all things, it is necessary that he hold the Catholic faith, which faith except everyone do keep whole and undefiled. Without doubt, he shall perish everlastingly. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance, for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Ghost. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Ghost uncreated. The Father, un the Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal and the Holy Ghost eternal. And yet they are not three eternals, but one eternal. And there are not three uncreated, nor three incomprehensible, but one uncreated, and one incomprehensible. So likewise, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, and the Holy Ghost almighty. And yet they are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. And yet they are not three gods, but one God. So likewise, the Father is Lord, the Son, Lord, and the Holy Ghost, Lord. And yet, not three lords, 
but one Lord. For like as we are compelled by the Christian verity to acknowledge every person by himself to be God and Lord, so we are forbidden by the Catholic religion to say there be three gods or three lords. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not made, not created, but begotten. The Holy Ghost is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. So there is one Father, not three fathers. One Son, not three sons. One Holy Ghost, not three Holy Ghosts. And in this Trinity, none is before the other or after. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal together and co-equal. So that in all things, as, as for said, the unity and trinity and the trinity and unity is to be worshipped. He therefore that will be saved must think thus of the trinity. Furthermore, it is necessary to everlasting salvation that he also believe faithfully the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the right faith is that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and man. God of the substance of the Father begotten before the world, and man, the substance of his mother born in the world. Perfect God and perfect man of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting, equal to the Father as touching his Godhead, and inferior to the Father as touching his manhood, who, although he be God and man, yet is not two, but one Christ. One, not by converse, conversion of the Godhead into flesh, but by taking the manhood into God. One, altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. <coughs> or as the reasonable soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, he ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. At whose coming all men will rise again with their bodies and shall give account for their own works. And they that have done good shall go into life everlasting, and they that have done evil into everlasting Father and fire. This is the Catholic faith. With, except a man believe truly and firmly, he cannot be saved. The reason I read that this morning, without commentary, and even though some of the language in there may strike our ears as being archaic, for instance, there was no mention of women, but ladies, you are included in the man, mankind. It is important for us who are Christians to understand what was just said. I want you to read this during the week. Let it sink in. <coughs> Wrestle with some of the phrases and when the week is over, put it in your Bible, put it on your refrigerator, or put it someplace that you will be reminded 
of one of the most unique features of our faith. That we talk about God the Father, we talk about God the Son, we talk about God the Holy Spirit. We are remiss and incomplete if all we do is talk about Jesus without talking about the one who sent him and the one at whose right side he now sits. We are incomplete if we do not lift up in equal measure the Holy Spirit, the advocate that Christ said would be sent and would be with us until the end of the age. We worship God in completeness, or we do not worship God at all. Whoever wrote that did us a favor. For this is the first of the ecumenical creeds that specifically mentions the Trinity. It is important. It is essential for our faith that we do not forget in whose name and in whose presence we are called and we are sent. Amen. 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 Would you stand as you are able for Lord of the Dance, the fifth verse? Go in peace, go in love, and go with grace. Amen.